Hello everybody, in this tutorial series, I'm gonna go ahead and try to do a project that's gonna encapsulate everything that we have talked about so far this semester. We're gonna do some retops, some UVs, some bakes, and some texturing, and within the texturing, we'll be doing some glowy stuff and some decals and, and uh, whatever else pops into my head. And then what you're going to need to do is basically replicate what I'm doing without using the specific geometry that I have about to choose here and without using the exact same color schemes or whatever, like I want you to make it your own, we will be finding some kind of reference somewhere to inform our decision-making on the materials end. Um, so anyway, this is the optimized hard surface kit bash set, which you can find in the syllabus. If you just click this link right here, you'll see something that looks very similar to hard surface uh, kit bash files. And there will be a link that'll take you to this specific FBX which looks like this. So what I'm gonna do, I've already kind of pre-selected a couple of pieces that I that I think look cool, and I'm gonna crash them together, and then I'm gonna retopologize both of them in a single mesh, and I'm going to use that uh, as my high poly, which I'll then retop and, and go through the whole process. So I'm gonna grab this piece here and just hit Control D and then I'm also going to grab this piece here. So as you're working on your own projects, if you decide that you really like to use either one of these, these pieces, please feel free. Just don't use them in the exact same configuration that I am using them. I want to kind of, I want you guys to branch out and do your own thing. So if I select this geometry and I uh, go to rotate, you can see it's all separate and it's all going to want to rotate around each individual piece's uh, axis, which is not optimal here, clearly. So I'm just going to select everything, go to Mesh, and then Combine. And then I'm just going to highlight this, this uh, piece of geometry here, and I'm going to tap the G key, which will repeat my last command. So now I have the two pieces that I want. I'm going to go ahead and just delete everything else. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, show my grid by going Display, Show, where is it? Grid, right here at the top. What I want is for this to be basically centered on this axis, uh, these axes here. It doesn't really matter which one, I just need them to be centered so that I can take advantage of symmetry uh, when I'm doing my retop. So this looks like it's actually pretty centered right there. So I'm gonna just uh, tap this key right here, which will turn on grid snap, which means this will snap automatically to the grid. And I'm gonna do the same thing over here. And we'll just tap the F key to zoom in so I can just kind of confirm that everything looks nice and centered there. And uh, it looks like I might rotate it with the x-axis. I can't remember what the default value for, for symmetry is. Honestly, it doesn't really matter. We can, just, we can just tell it to be whatever it needs to be. Okay, so I'm gonna turn the grid snap off and I want to position these. Now this, this side has all these cool little, little holes on it whereas this side is flat and boring. So I'm gonna go ahead and give this a rotate. And I wanna pay attention to my channel box. Um, if you don't see it, you can go to Windows, uh, General Editor's channel box, it'll pop right up. And you can see exactly what the rotations are. So I've got, uh, I need to keep it in increments of 90 basically. So here's gonna be uh, uh, negative 180. And then the translates, we don't need to worry about. That's just, there we go. That's just where it's where it happens to be in the scene. Okay. If you hit the uh, plus and the minus, you can make your uh, your transform gizmo uh, either grow or shrink. And what I actually want for this is I want this to be rotated. Let's see. I had this set up fairly neatly because if I just do this, it's okay. But I think it could look maybe a little bit cooler if we have just a little bit more of a of an angle on it. Kind of like that gives a little bit more like a of an aggressive stance maybe this is like a, a turret gun or something and i kind of want to make sure that what's going on here makes a little bit more sense i can't really scale like i, I want to be careful not to do this kind of thing because then i'm going to throw my roundness off there so what i can try to do instead is maybe just grow this out a little bit make sure i don't have well i've got some round things there so that might not be such a great idea so we'll just need to do a uniform scale, just shrink the whole thing down a little bit. I mostly just want to get a border that kind of makes sense, looks intentional. 
because if it's if it's right up there, like we get this kind of ugly stuff, and and uh, that's no good. So let's just see what. So if I, again, you know, it's like if if I'm like just barely there, it's kind of a pain. If I give myself some clearance though, then some of this this uh, random stuff starts to feel maybe a little bit more uh, cohesive. Also, these these kinds of features are going to be a little bit more difficult to include in the retop, but it'll help a lot. I've got little venti things down there and not much going on up there. I'm just kind of thinking about... So right now, this, uh, this pivot is oriented to the world. So if I were to rotate it, it's going to actually uh, result with this thing pointing in a different direction than where I started. If I double click the rotate tool and rather than axis orientation world, I say object, which you can see now is if I rotate it, it's going to stay pointing in the same direction. So we'll just say 180 because, whoops, I think that might have been the wrong axis. Let's see this guy. There you are. So now we get some of the more interesting stuff on the top. And let's just say hypothetically that that's, that's where this is going to be primarily viewed from. So I have just like a little piece of it sticking out there, these little, this little feature. I'm just going to scoot it in a little bit. Kind of see what's going on down here. I could see more little, uh, little pieces that if I just bump it in a tiny bit, it just feels a little bit less haphazard. There we go. Okay, great. Okay, so there is my my high poly, quote unquote. So we can just go ahead and do a mesh combine. It's very, very easy to separate this if I need to. Um, I can I can split off any of these pieces or I can break it all up. And one thing also worth mentioning, if I go to my uh, window, where is this outliner? The outliner is basically the structure of the scene. You can see I've got all this this stuff in here, which is basically the construction history of all the combine operations that I just did. I don't want any of this laying around. It doesn't really do me any good. It doesn't really hurt anything. It's just a bunch of crap I don't need. So I got to do, once you've got your geometry set up the way you want it, is go edit, delete by type history, and you will see most of that stuff go away. And if it doesn't, you can just nuke it. Just uh, select it and hit delete. Okay, so uh, in the next video, we're going to go ahead and jump into the retop process for this piece.